there is nothing more precious in life than freedom your freedom is in your hands there is nothing more precious in life than freedom your freedom is in your hands I have come here as the commander of this revolution to let you know that we will defeat Cameroon. We will not only defeat Cameroon, we will make it impossible for Cameroon again to ever invade our land. My name is Innam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. That name that strikes fear into the heart of the Fulani Janjawi. When they hear IPOB, they start having nightmares. I lead that very movement. Movement of the children of light. And have we not brought enlightenment to all the people? This very movement that heaven ordained must free the whole of Nigeria. Everybody must be free. And that light, the same way that the sun rises from the east, that light is coming from the east. As always. I am the director of Radio Biafra and Biafra Television. God gave me another assignment this year. It seems. Not only to serve the wonderful people of Biafra, but also to serve the brave youth of Nigeria. And that is what I'm doing this evening. And will continue to do until everybody is free. Until every corrupt politician is either in the grave because they'll be hanged or they are in prison. The difference between some of you and us is that we say something and we do it. If you keep muttering and bumbling, no things are bad, though. Oh, things are bad, though. Here, we make our dreams become the reality. Not because we have any strength. Not because we are better than any other person. But because Elohim, Chiko Kikabi Amapuri, is on the throne. I am always speaking the truth. You may not like it. It is the truth. more precious in life If Nigerians listen very well, the president, when he came to power, said, I'm for nobody, I'm for everybody, which is what he should be. But eventually, the president said, those who voted for me, I'm going to give them 95%. That's a hate speech against those who didn't vote for you. It is a total violation of the oath of office and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Once elected, you are no longer president of APC, or PDP, but a president of the whole Federal Republic of Nigeria. Buhari violated that. In his appointment, there are 14 heads of security agencies in the country. 11 are from the north, two from the southwest, and one chief of naval staff from the south south. Nobody from the southeast. Is that not hate? That is not even hate speech, it is hate action. Now, in the appointment, of inner circle, like chief of staff, secretary to the government, everybody thought he had gone to Bonneon. You remember? And he did his usual thing. So we began to see nepotism on the part of a president. 
we have begun to see hate, which translated into marginalization, clearly. And there is no armor against the will of a people. You can't suppress any. This is a democracy. People must talk. And they began to talk. That's what they are calling agitation. Yes. If I'm being victimized, I will say it. It's very, very glaring that Buhari has been anti Igbo, anti East. And if the reasons are that they didn't vote for him, it's, it's utter rubbish. It's unheard of in the history of any well known uh, Trump now will say this person didn't vote for me, therefore you discriminate against them. So uh, the president is the chief sponsor and promoter of the agitation in the Southeast. I have accused him of that. Because if he had a level playing field and treated all Nigerians equally, there would be no justification. But he, he is the chief sponsor of all the agitations. And then when the agitation started, you expect the father of a nation to call your boys. Come, let us dialogue. He treated them as if they are inconsequential. Dialogue can solve a lot of problems. You don't have to concede, but at least you call them. He said to go to hell. The hell is where all of us are today. So the president mismanaged it, and that is how Boko Haram was also mismanaged. You take an inconsequential unknown colonel and put him in the prison, he becomes an instant hero. And then you release him and give him terms and conditions, he violates it because you have created a hero. The president created this situation. This APC government of Buhari is responsible for the agitations you have seen all over the country. Yo, this is my quote, and I repeat. Mm. The problem of Nigeria is not gun and bullet. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. You can't fight an ideology with God and bullet. Let me explain this. See that before we pray. I'm, I'm worried. Some people want to fight an ideology. How do you fight an ideology? An ideology is like a spirit. You can fight an ideology. You can't use gun and bullet to stop an ideology. The way to deal with an ideology, you engage it with wisdom. The only bullets that can kill an ideology is the bullet of knowledge. Wisdom. Wisdom. The only way, <laughs> the only way to deal with the ideology is to go back to the founder of the ideology and he program the ideology and stand at the central processing unit of the ideology and make sure it is rightfully corrected. You can, if you remove the leader, have you removed the ideology? There are more crazy Namdi Kanu that will come up after Namdi. They are just hiding under him. The only way to kill this is not by gun and bullet. It's by engaging with proper dialogue with knowledge and wisdom this cry we are hearing here is not a cry of children it's a cry of adults the only way I'm, i am not an advocate that nigeria sh should separate god forbid no but i'm saying the best way to handle this listen to the cry of the children sit down everything is not gone and bullets when you take the leader away, okay, take the leader away. The next, how many people are on the streets? Do you know how many spirit of Biafra have entered people? Do you know how many? Do you know how many millions are carrying the spirit of Biafra around? So if you kill the leader or you take the leader away, can you take the spirit from everybody? Ojuku is not here, but Biafra is alive. It's an ideology. The man who started it has left. Before he left, he kept quiet and lived peacefully and left. But 
The generation that have come have picked it up. And it's even worse than his own now. And they are engaging it with an idea, with, with knowledge. So the best way to deal with this is not gun and bullet. It's not gun and bullet. When the revolution wants to start, the revolutionists, the first thing they will do, they will pass the idea and impregnate their followers. The only way to stop it is to stop them before they impregnate the followers. But if the followers are impregnated, <laughs> that's all. All of them are carrying pregnancy. They will soon deliver to other children. If you, if you have 2 million Biafra, you already have 4 million Biafra. Because they are selling the ideology. And now, I don't have a problem. But I, what my, my own concern is that you don't take woman's life. The best way to do that, you engage them in the ideology. If you feel the ideology is not correct, you dialogue. You sit down with them. If dignifying them will make them feel important, then do that. We can't be killing people and we are getting excited. No! Boko Haram is a terrorist group. Uh -huh. Have you stopped them from killing? Are they not still killing? They are still killing. Did they start as a peaceful group? Yes. Were the ideology crazy? Yes. How do you engage it? Engage the leaders. And you see, some of these things are very spiritual. They are very spiritual. Very spiritual. See, something that can die within 15 days, it can stay there for 15 years because the way leaders are handling it. The issue of Biafra is so simple. You are agitating? Is this what you want? Then confirm. Okay, let's do a referendum. Let's see how popular this thing is. Or restructure Nigeria. That's all. Sit down with these boys. Make them feel important. How did the unrest in Niger Delta died? Yeradua did dialogue. That's the best way. This thing, ga, 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 everything, 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 gone, bullet, everything, fight, aggression. It will take us nowhere. The world is too civilized. Look at America. Look at the way they abuse Trump and they say everything. The guy with those bands and tweet again. He tweets and continue his life. That is what we call civilization. That is what we call. You can abuse me to hell. Say whatever you want to say. He doesn't stop it. I am the president and I am the commander in charge of wherever you are. You abuse, but I'm still your president. These things are just simple maturity. To fill a political office is not maturity. It's an appointment. I'm worried. I started talking about Biafra before this happened. And I was saying, let's kill this thing. Dialogue. Dialogue. Even we as fathers, our children will just do some things like, and we see it very stupid. But we have to give them audience. I just hear them. And let them talk. And when they talk, what do we do? We touch and, and advise them. Sitting down at the table and talking and talking even to take us to discuss for one month for life not to be lost is what important than losing lives if we have to engage and i'm and all the biafra discussing discussing young man what do you want we keep let's do naivety in discussing than losing millions of souls discussion dialogue we never kill anybody. But bullets we kill. Give Jesus a clap of friends. God began to speak to me about Biafra. And I'm worried. I stopped somewhere last month and I'm going to throw a little light on another one. And I pray that the authority consigned should listen to me. And it's a statement. Dialogue now. So that you should not be knocking the door for dialogue and there's no dialogue. That's what God told me. 
I keep saying it, I said there is a spirit in this young man. It is bigger than what physical eye can see. I'm not an Igbo man, I'm a Yoruba man, but I'm speaking as a prophet. I said, what I see in this young man is bigger than him. You see, the man, the small boy that they call him, what is inside him is bigger. It's not just an ideology. It's bigger. I said, I see an animal. Which animal did I tell you last time? Huh? I said, what? A what? A what? A small puppy. And I said, I see a small puppy going forward. All of a sudden, I saw so many strange wild animals, lion, bear, great animals around the puppy. Then I saw the puppy look back and saw that the animals around him are so many. Suddenly the puppy, what I saw last month is different from what I'm seeing now. The puppy is developing some futures of wild animals. It <laughs> This prophetic word is not to the negative. It's very important. Take the Biafra agitation serious. Dialogue now. Because I see a time. Doors are knocked. Calls are made. People who are heady are saying we have come down. But these people are not willing to dialogue again. Please, redeeming the time. For the days are evil. Dialogue now. Dialogue now. I repeat it again. I'm not an evil man, but I'm telling you what I'm shown in the spirit. What? I'm seeing great people, important people in this nation coming together and saying, now, okay, we want to sit on the table. Let us talk. But the people you want to talk with are saying, it's too late. Please, dialogue now. The days ahead are evil. Dialogue now. This is not a cry of a baby. It's a cry of an adult. I repeat it again. Dialogue now. The Bible said, Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Please, every authority... There come a time when a revolution is about to take place. The power of God, bombs and bullets cannot hold an ideology. Please, dialogue now. This is not the time of, I have bullets, I have gun, I have bomb. This has nothing to do with bullets and bomb. If you know what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, everyone in federal authority should take the Biafra agitation serious. If you are once a founding father of this nation, sit down around the table and listen to your children. Dialogue now! This is not the time to arrest anybody. Is the time to hear the cry of the people. Dialogue now. Because he's going to be the last resultant solution at the end. But when you are asking, when the king comes down from his throne and he's saying, I'm ready to talk, and everybody is throwing stone on at you, then you will know that it is important. To dialogue with honor and prestige and go out and there is peace in the land.
Leo, this is my quote and I repeat. Mm. Poverty is not the absence of natural resources, financial resources or human resources. It is the absence of leadership. Okay. I'll begin by saying that when greed, tribalism, ethnocracy and nepotism encapsulate a group of people, no matter how rich they may be, they will never see the future. Africans that have had the hearts to push the continent Africa to another dimension have been destroyed by Africans. Most of the fathers of independence had this na their nations at heart. And if they were given the opportunity to execute what they intended to do, it would have been very possible for Africa to have emerged ere long. I will give you a few, a few analyses that will shock you. A country like Togo got independence from France under the leadership of Sivanos Olympio. Olympio did not want the France CFA. Olympio created the Togo currency. But a man called Iadema Nasingbe was used to eliminate, that is a Togolist, used to eliminate a Togolist that has Togo at heart. Iadema Nasingbe kicked, killed Ivanos Olympio. You go down to Burkina Faso, there is this guy called Maurice Yamiyogo. He was the one that gave them independence. He was annihilated. The person that came later after him, Thomas Sankara, in 1987, he was eliminated by Bless Kampaori. You come to Central Africa Republic, there's David Daku. David Daku was to change the nation in another dimension, but a man called Bukasa was used to eliminate him. You go down to Congo Brazzaville, there's this guy called Maron Ngwabi. Ngwabi also was eliminated through a coup d'etat. Now, if you go down to Guinea, Kitoria, yeah, there was this guy called uh, Masias Ngema. It was his own cousin, Obiangema Basoko, that was used to eliminate him. You go down to Ghana, Osage from Kwame Nkrumah had a good intention for the nation. It was Kotoko, his own neighbor, clan night neighbor, that eliminated him. You go to Nigeria, the guys of Namdi Azikiwe, they were eliminated by poor close to them. Now, if you put it in a nutshell, you go to a Mozambique, Samura Moise Machel, it was his close partner that eliminated him. The West, and I repeat, will never and ever have access to Africa until they use Africans. That's why I say what is eating the bean seed is within the bean seed. Africans are full with greed, full with ethnocracy, tribalism and nepotism. And if nothing is done, we will keep on killing our best every year. As I talked to you recently, I would guarantee you all shorty that this guy magufuli has convinced us against once more that africa does not need any support out of the country lazarus chakwera in his eight minute speech commemorating the death of magufuli he said the unpredictable magufuli they did not know that leadership could run in africa without money being borrowed from international monetary fund because they did not know magufuli was coming they did not know that projects could be set up and executed on time because they did not know Magufuli was coming. They did not know that somebody could not pay attention to International Assembly, General Assembly of the United Nations. They did not know Magufuli was coming. African presidents have given us the impression that you must borrow to succeed. Before Magufuli came to power, most of the mines in Tanzania were privatized. But what he did was that he came back and then sanction the foreign companies that were mining in Tanzania until 16% of those particular mines were given back as ownership back to Tanzania. A scenario occurred in Zambia. Zambia is the best producer of copper. You have the copper belt in Zambia. Zambia sold that copper belt to an American firm upfront without payment. That they will exploit the copper and pay them later. American firm came, took that particular copper belt, turned it within two years and paid the money up front. And is giving Zambia a 0.00 something percent as royalty for their mine. Was that colonialism? It is talking about stupidity and poor management. Who brought gun to give that, that, that copper belt to America? Nobody brought gun. When last did you see Europeans using prestation? assimilation or indirect rule in Africa is no longer there. Let us consider the fact that they are taking a greater chunk of our resources. The balance we have here is very possible for us to manage those things. How can a man come in five years time without borrowing a dime from International Monetary Fund, 
a dime from World Bank, he was able to restore six aircrafts into the Tanzania airline. He was able to build bridges, build railway, restore back the Julius Nera hydroelectricity project that could give Tanzania 99% guarantee of electricity throughout the year without borrowing a dime. China proposed to borrow him 10 billion to reconstruct and expand the poor in Dar es Salaam. He refused, yet the poor was under extension. Where did he get the money? That's what we are talking about. A man that came and gave free education to all government schools in Tanzania. Mr. Liu, 20,000 ghost workers were discovered. That's where our money is going to. That's not colonialism. He also arrested 14,000 unqualified workers in the government. Those 34,000 persons who were earning salary they did not marry is what was melting down the economy. It was not a colonial master. I think if we go down to most African countries, there are people who are earning salaries that do not exist in the government. Where is colonialism in all these things I have, I have outlined? A man who said that education is free for girls, but the moment you become pregnant, your family will start paying fees. A nice way of fighting moral decadence. Who are we going to blame? Where did he get the money? Money he came and saw the hospital. President that goes down to the hospital. Beds were scattered, rotting. Patients were sleeping on the floor. He fired the entire medical staff and gave them one month to repair all the beds in Tanzania. And suddenly, from nowhere, the beds were repaired in the space of two months. How can it be? This is intergenerational. The pains that are being visited upon this generation are out of the sins that were committed by the other generation. It is a time to repent. 
so that we who have transgressed may say that we have repented because the future now does not lie in us. The future lies in the young ones. Shinwa Achebe was right. These are the young suckers that will grow when the old banana dies. These are the very same upon whose shoulder Africa shall rise. Your duty and my duty is to plant the tree in the knowledge that one generation plants a tree, another generation waters the tree, another generation prunes the tree, another generation enjoys its shade. That is our duty. So this morning, we are not here to say new things. We are only here to remind ourselves that in the beginning there was God and that that God created man and that that man I, ex I suspect was an African and that that man could not have been anything else but an African. Why I suspect so because all creation says that man came from the earth and as I said, the earth is either black or brown. So in the beginning, there was an African. And in the beginning, there was a spirit into which that mold was made alive. And that spirit was God. And I suspect that that God gave us intelligence. And I suspect that that God created Africa where it is in the very middle because the very middle, the very center is the fulcrum and that is why I suspect Africa is where it is, enjoying not too much cold, enjoying not too much sun. It is in the middle. It is indeed life measures as it should be measured. And that is why I suspect in his divine wisdom, he put all the minerals in Africa. If it is not gold, it is coltan. If it is not coltan, it is iron ore. If it is not iron ore, it is copper. And he does not stop there. When he was distributing rivers and lakes, he ensured that Africa had the best of lakes, the best of rivers, and he did not stop there. He ensured that we are surrounded with the best of oceans. If it is not the Atlantic, it is the Indian, which should be called the African. I do not know why they call it the Indian Ocean, but that is their conspiracy. Then there is the Mediterranean. They also call it another name, and he did not stop there. Once he had done that, he ensured that this is a continent that has men and women who are so forgiving, so generous. This is the only continent that has welcomed all civilization. We started with the Arabs, they abused us. Then came the Portuguese, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the Dutch came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the Italians came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the Germans came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the French came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the English came, we welcomed them and they abused us. Then the Indians came, we welcomed them and they abused us. Then the Lebanese came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Now the Chinese are coming, we are welcoming them and they are abusing us. We must stop this. And we can only stop this through self-realization. And that is why when I, can, I conclude, I must conclude by making reference to a great African, Ante Chek Diop of Senegal, who writing in his book, The, human, the African Origin of Humankind, Myth or Reality, says, this is a problem that can only be solved through aggression. And I'm telling us, this is the time now for Africa to rise. Africa will be great. Africa must be great, and it will only be great if we choose to spiritually decolonize our minds, our hearts, and culture, By because France, it is only then... French Cameroon's colonial master. This greed would spiral out for over six decades until five years ago with the people of Ambazonia decided to fight back method for method. With so much historical justification for both the people of Biafra and their counterparts in Ambazonia, 
forming collaborative alliances to strengthen their resolve in and has been under consideration for a long time. Today, both leaders and with the support of their respective citizens are now set to speak for the first time about their groundbreaking relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, the Amazonian Communication Network will now like to welcome the host of this primetime event. Our hosts will then have the privilege to usher in their leaders, Mazi Namdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, and Dr. Cho Ayaba, the leader of the Amazonia Liberation War. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to this historic day. I am Simon Ekpa, an activist of the indigenous people of Biafra. Today, we are bringing to you a historic press briefing of two leaders. We are bringing to you this historic press briefing and today history will be made. On this note, may I bring in these two leaders who have defiled everything, the corrupt terrorist African leaders has brought upon the people. May I use this opportunity to bring to the studio the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the undefeatable leader, a man with nine lives, the man who have defiled all nature, defiled all terrorist activities of the, of the Nigeria government the man who have made it possible for us today to be very resilient and very brave to request and agitate for the freedom of the people of Biafra. A man who defeated death. The day the Nigerian government invented his house and shot dead almost over a hundred people. Today, he is leading the world's most powerful movement for the freedom of Biafra people. He is the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. IPOB has become one of the world's most powerful movement for the freedom of indigenous people. The IPOB are scattered almost all over 120 countries of the world. Welcome, Maze Namdi Okukano, the Ohama DK of Biafra, to the studio. Thank you, Simon. And thank you all the wonderful people of Biafra listening and watching right across this very planet Earth. And also I welcome my dear brother, Dr. Cho, who is here with me today. And my greetings to the very resilient and resolute Amazonian people. And I can assure each and every one of them that by the end of this very process, one outcome is inevitable. That is the liberation of our nations. I thank all of you once again. And I do hope that this evening will provide a very compelling insight into what we have in store for our respective peoples in terms of what we are doing to restore God's kingdom upon the face of the earth. That very part of this world that have hitherto been neglected. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. To welcome to the studio. To welcome to the studio the, in the undefeatable leader of the Ambazonia Liberation of War, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Dr. Cho Ayaba have as well 
defeated all the terrorist governments in Cameroon. Today, he has given the opportunity for Ambazonians to be very resolute in their quest for freedom of the Ambazonians. Let me use this opportunity once more. Thanks for having me. Uh, first, let me thank my brother, Mazi Namdekanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, for taking this bold step so we can stand shoulder by shoulder and together to face the ultimate systems that have put our people under subjugation. I want to thank our people, Ambazonians, for showing their understanding to this alliance and we will be speaking to their fears and aspirations and hope to the great people of Biafra who have suffered tribulations and torment I think as your leader has said you are the appointed uh, generation and you will see Biafra thank you to Cho Ayaba for that wonderful speech and opening speech. Now we are going to have a brief press briefing from both leaders. Like you know, this is a historic day as we move forward for the liberation of the Ambazonians and Biafra people. The generation of Ambazonia and new generation of Biafra on this day will make history. Let me use this opportunity to bring in the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazi Namdi Okukano, the Ohamadike one of Biafra. Ladies and gentlemen, Citizens of Ambazonia and Biafra, the national anthem of Ambazonia. Hail, hail, hail this land of glory, we the Ambazonia, special loyalty. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Biafra and Ambazonia, the national anthem of the indigenous people of Biafra.
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Amazonia, citizens of Amazonia, Biafra, Biafra, and friends of the world, and friends of the world, welcome to the welcome joint press to the briefing joint between press the leader of the indigenous, the leader of the indigenous of Biafra. people of Biafra, Mazi, Mazi, Namdi, Kanu, and the leader of the Amazonian Liberation War, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Thank you very much, um, great people all over the world, the wonderful people of Ambazonia, my own flesh and my own blood, my own kith and my king. It is a unique honor and privilege to share the same platform with one of your leaders, the leader of war of Ambazonia, Dr. Cho Ayuba, who is here today representing the aspirations, the wishes, and the hopes of Ambazonian people all over the world, and more critically, the leader of Ambazonia himself, the president who is incarcerated in a prison in Yaoundé. A man I hold in great esteem and admiration, our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts, and our hopes, of course, go out to him, and we do hope he will be released very, very imminently. My dear people all over the world, Biafrans and Ambazonians, we stand on the brink of history on this very day. Today is the ninth day of April in the year of our Most High Elohim 2021. It is a day that will go down in history. The history of Biafra and Ambazonia peoples, and indeed the history of Africa at large. As a day that our peoples came together with close ranks, identified our common problems, and crystallized it in a speedy emergence of these very two nations. We, we Biafrans and Ambazonians, have resolved from this very day to do what we must do and everything humanly possible to ensure that we change not only the narrative, but to begin the process of the eventual reclaiming of our long shared collective heritage, a shared heritage that goes back to the beginning of time. Today, we are indeed on the brink of history. A lot of people never wanted us to get together a lot of people never wanted us to identify with one another. Those who are benefiting from our misery and our pain, today we have reduced all of them to nothing. Because genetically and culturally, Biafrans and Ambazonians go back to the beginning of time as original peoples of southern Nigeria and southern Cameroon. Geneticists, have sequenced and dated the DNA of Biafrans and Ambazonians and discovered them to be one of the oldest DNA on planet Earth. The earliest culture builders on planet Earth known to archaeologists and anthropologists as the Bantu peoples of, of Africa originated from within the regions of Biafra and Ambazonia. We are old people. We are the people of the ancient. From these very Biafran and Ambazonian regions, the Bantu homeland and the cradle of human civilization, the great Bantu migrations of 1500 BC to 2000 BC took place to introduce our collective civilizations to other corners of Africa and beyond. The history of our two peoples, Biafrans and Ambazonians, has indeed been intertwined and shared from time immemorial. Our forefathers, we are very much aware of this shared heritage and destiny of Biafrans and Ambazonians. And at different times in history, the coming together of Biafran and Ambazonian peoples under collective leadership and cooperation has produced radically rewarding results. We should perhaps mention a few examples here. Examples 
of the powerful and rewarding results that Biafra and Ambazonia partnership could produce, we are seen in the liberation of Haiti. A former slave colony of the French between 1791 and 1804 through a historic revolution. Our people are noted because they are warriors. Ambazonians and Biafrans alike fought side by side as one people in Haiti that made Haiti the first black nation on this very earth to shake off the shackles of slavery and domination. This is the origin of such extant Haitian phrases as Igbo Gramon and Igbo Lele, as you have today in Haiti. Similarly, during colonial invasion and the subsequent colonization of these regions, which was nothing but a sophisticated form of slavery, our peoples, Biafrans and Ambazonians, fought colonial enslavement with everything they had. The exploits of a Kumeku, the secret society of freedom fighters in Biafra land that engaged the British invading colonialists for over three decades is still very fresh in our minds. Again, it was to people from Biafra and, and Amazonia that the burden of ending colonial occupation politically in the region fell on their shoulders. Hence, we have the activity of the Nigeria Council, the, the National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon, NCNC, of course, well superintended by Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, which was coordinated by nationalists from Biafra and Ambazonia as reference in the anti colonial movement that would produce the present Berlin Conference Design States like Nigeria and Cameroon, which unfortunately Biafras and Amazonians are suffering untold hardships under. The sufferings and pains of pains of Biafrans and Amazonians are carefully and diabolic, diabolically designed neo-colonial schemes to ensure that our peoples, who are natural leaders of the Black world, never develop or make any progress, consequently leading to the subjugation of the entire African continent in perpetuity. This diabolical neo-colonialist scheme has not succeeded because the colonial enslavers simply decreed it into existence. No, it was succeeding because some fellow black people or Africans decided to make themselves willing tools in the enslavement of the rest of their brothers and sisters. And this is something that we are determined to bring to an end. This trend is by no means a recent trend. It is indeed a trend that is as old as the Arab enslavement of Africans and will be perfected through the European enslavement and the colonization through invasion of the rest of Black Africa. In Africa, there are groups whose whole economic existence and their worldviews have evolved around their collaboration with those who have no value for African lives and want to destroy Africans by every means. That is how the phenomenon of the Fulani terrorist proclivity have been created over the ages to destroy everything that is African. It is a proclivity that has in gendered the existence of not less than six or seven terrorist groups that are owned and operated by the Fulani people. Terrorizing people and grabbing their lands across West African sub-region, as well as the areas bordering the entire Gulf of Guinea. It is a proclivity that has been enabled by some evil people, both outside and inside Africa. Both Biafrans and Ambazonians have been victims of this evil. And today, going forward, we have resolved to bring it to an end. Over the years, our grandfathers and our grandmothers have stormed this terrorist proclivity in the hope that it would go away somehow. 
that is clear to all that after so much turning of the other cheek, because when they slap us on one cheek, we turn the other cheek for them to slap as well. And payment in blood, these bullies never ever became reasonable. Instead, it has emboldened them. This is part of the reason why Biafrans and Ambazonians are coming together this very day to confront our collective enemies together. We are also coming together to rediscover our shared biological and cultural heritages. Extant anthropological studies point to the cultural unity of Biafrans and Ambazonian peoples because we are one people. Anybody who is doubting us should please consult their genetic studies and DNA mapping, which points to a singular origin of both Biafrans and Ambazonians. It is therefore only logical that this day would come. We are grateful to Almighty God in heaven, for determining that this alliance must be formed so that God's own people will be set free as only him has decreed. We are indeed on the brink of history. So far, even though our struggles for freedom have had different trajectories, Biafrans and Ambazonians have a shared destiny. Our collective destiny is to once again lead the continent of Black Africa to achieve that humanity will marvel at, just like our Bantu ancestors did when they civilized the whole of the known world around them. In the coming days, we Biafras and Ambazonians will be communicating to the world in sequence, and as the need arises, our blueprint for cooperation preparatory to the re-emergence of our nations, just like the almighty God in heaven, Chukukika Biyama has decreed. In this vein, I hereby welcome every Biafran, every Ambazonian to a new dawn of our shared destiny and collective leadership of our peoples to lasting freedom. Long live the Republic of Biafra. Long live the nation of Ambazonia. Thank you very much. I know. Yes, sir. And that was a press briefing coming from our leader, Mazi Namdi Okukano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And let me use this opportunity to welcome the leader of the Ambazonian Liberation of War, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks to my brother, Mazin Namdikanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. We have assembled here today in front of our two peoples to declare our intentions, to work together, to ensure our collective survival from the brutal annexation that have occurred in our both nations. We understand the difficulties that both peoples, the people of Biafra and Ambazonia have faced in the last 60 years. But we have been discussing in the past few months to ensure that our collective strength be brought together to be more impactful to ensuring that we do not be quit to the next generation a more oppressed homeland than we inherited. The Ambazonia and Biafra Alliance is critical in an area where Nigeria and Cameroon have established two autocracies that have used violence as a political tool to suppress our both peoples. Within Nigeria itself, you have in the north, the Hausas and Fulanese, who have cross-border relationships in Niger. In the west, you have the Yorubas with cross-border relationship into Benin. The people of Biafra have been denied access to Ambazonia. 
And we must recall that during the Biafran War of Independence, why countries like France, that is the highest investor today in Nigeria, provided support. Countries like Ivory Coast, Norway, and others. The one country being ruled by a Fulani man that refused Biafra the opportunity to receive support to prevent genocide was Cameroon. Because Ayijo, a Fulani man, preferred the domination that was exercised by the Fulanese from within Nigeria and Cameroon over the Biafran people. Ambazonia is the only access you have. And within Cameroon itself, while the people have relationship with Central African Republic and other countries, Biafra is our only closest neighbor with massive investment within Ambazonia. Biafra is also the place where thousands of our people have sought refuge and have been treated with great hospitality. And for this, I want to thank the people of Biafra who have taken care of our refugees and ask you to continuously support them. Going forward, we are going to work together in different areas to ensure that our both nations emerge from these exclusive servitude imposed by both Cameroon and Nigeria. In coming to this joint press conference, I understand the worries of Ambazonians, and I have taken time to brief other leaders to make sure that I can allay the worries and fears of our people. These worries and fears is rooted in history. We were part of the Eastern House of Assembly in Enigo. But one great difference is when our leaders walk out of that house, there were no helicopter gunships that mauled our people. Our people were not massacred because we chose to establish a capital in Boya. But in the last four years, we have observed with great dismay, the rapacious policy of Cameroon, the tyranny of a system that is intended on governing Ambazonia without consent. And if I will be given a choice to make Biafra my friend or Nigeria my friend, I will understand that the state that kidnapped and renditioned hundreds of our people, who were then locked in communicado, subjected to torture, brutality, and sentenced to life in jail was not the people providing sanctuary to our people. If I would be given a choice between Nigeria and Biafra, I will recall the thousands and thousands of Biafrans who are part of our economy. I will recall history that when we had a wonderful trade with Biafra, the port of Tico was vibrant. The port of Victoria was vibrant. So too was the port of Port Harcourt and Calabar. But the Fulanese that have been governing Cameroon at that time dismantled our economic infrastructure and made it impossible for bilateral trade between our country and Biafra to take place, subjecting our population to impunity, making it impossible for any cross-border relationship. As you have said, we are one people interculturally linked. But I also want to remind Ambazonians that I take your concerns seriously. That is why this alliance is split into three phases. First, to ensure that both peoples are liberated from the tyranny imposed on them. And to establish within a transitional period methods of collaboration and cooperation to dismantling the economic blockade that have impoverished our two nations. And within this period, there will be massive consultations within Ambazonia to ensure that any treaty that will be binding between the two nations is approved by the Ambazonian people. This relationship and alliance is critical 
across the globe, nations and peoples and countries are coming together to ensure the prosperity of their people, to ensure the liberation of their people. The Biafrans have been subjected to genocide, ecological hazard by a few greedy people who have hijacked an entire nation and make sure that they treated the Biafran people with impunity. For the past 60 years, Cameroon rolled its tongues into Amazonia, subjected our people to economic deprivation, political asphyxiation, cultural intoxication. Those who spoke were murdered. Those who escaped were haunted like games, rendition, and incarcerated incommunicado in the jails of the occupier. For us, the Amazonian people, we have resolved in the past four years to match Cameroon method for method and ideal for ideal, to make sure we arm ourselves to the teeth, to ensure that the brutality that our people have been subjected to in the past 60 years comes to an end so that we can establish within our own borders economic and political systems that are indigenous to our own cultural and political realities, that our leaders are accountable to our people, that our bounties will be exploited for the development of our people and those who believe in our own values, that our nations will never again, the nation of Biafra and Ambazonia, taken hostage by a few greedy men, our women raped, our children subjected to misery, and our men turn into boys. The era of domination that benefited a few within our continent and beyond its shores, leaving millions destitute, leaving millions moving across the Atlantic, dying in the ocean, must come to an end. We must redefine the contours of the continent. For the notion of Pan-Africanism must be re redefined to ensure that self-determination of nations that have been caught under political systems that do not represent their interests becomes the norm. Before there was Nigeria, there was Biafra. You cannot allow yourselves to be taken hostage by a few men who've decided to rape your soils for their own interests. So too are Ambazonians. We don't seek this alliance as an aggression against others. We seek this alliance as a means of self-preservation against tyrannies that have curtailed for both peoples our right to survive within our own shores. We mean no evil to others, for everyone has a right to self-determination. And we are determined to exercise this for ourselves and for our people to ensure we bequeath to the next generation a better country than we inherited. God bless Biafra. God bless Amazonia. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that wonderful, wonderful speech coming from Dr. Joe Ayaba. Uh, I would uh, want to ask just one question, one question, but then I think it will be very, very imperative, you know, to ask two questions. I wanted to ask one, that both leaders will address, uh, both of you will address this question, but I want to ask individual question because, you know, this is a historic, a historic event. And, uh, I want to seize this opportunity to ask these questions. Now, to our leader, uh, Mazi Namde Okukano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the Ohamadike one of Biafra, uh, I want to throw this question to you. Maybe not question per se, but let me throw this question this way. Just a uh, few days ago, I came across article, an article written by 
New York Times. And this article say, and I quote, more than 1,800 prisoners are broken out of jail in Nigeria. Gunmen bearing machine gun and grenade storm a prison in a restive part of Southeast Nigeria, many refer to as Biafra. Many refer to as Biafra, letting loose any imnet who wanted out. Now, I'm going to also take a line from this same article, which says, Biafra in the same New York time, and that it will say, it has been 51 years since the end of the Nigeria Civil War, in which people of Eastern region broke away from the rest of the country. Biafra, the state they created, came to an end when its leader surrounded after 30 months of fighting. Then, but the Biafra dream is alive and well. And when I listen to both of you, I listen to Dr. Cho Ayaba, I, I see the same agony, the same story, the same kind of, uh, uh, you know, experience. I also have come across an article which says that the Ambazonian, some of the Amb Ambazonian leaders who sought for refugee in Nigeria were arrested secretly and repatriated back to Cameroon against international law. Now, why I made references or try to read from this report is because a lot of people may have somehow a different opinion, divergent views about the historic alliance between Biafra and Ambazonia. I want the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, our leader Mazen Namdikano, what assurance are you giving to Biafrans Knowing fully well that New York Times, for the very first time since the beginning of the restoration struggle for Biafra, they are now recognizing Biafra in the east side of Nigeria. Can we hear your opinion on this? Yeah, um, thank you very much, Simon. And once again, let me commend my dear brother, Dr. Joe Ayaba um for this event this evening morning or night depending on where you're watching us from i did say many years ago that a time will come when they will talk about us and that time has come and they are talking about us because of what we have been able to exhibit over the years consistency determination resoluteness and of course above all being ideologically, philosophically, and spiritually consistent in what we are doing. Because the word secession, I do not recognize. The word, um, should I say, extremism, I do not recognize either. Because as I have always argued, you cannot secede from something that you're older than. The white man came and decided to create Nigeria. Nigeria is not the creation of God. And if we continue along this same line, including my dear brothers and sisters of Ambazonia, then ultimately the world will recognize what we are yearning for and do something about it. If they fail to do something about it, we will do something about it ourselves. Because one thing is certain, when did Cameroons come into existence? You heard our dear brother there, the leader of the world of Ambazonia, telling us that these same Ambazonians are looking at today. At the time, they were in Enugu, attending the same Eastern Constitutive Assembly in Enugu. The man you're looking at, Dr. Cho Ayoba, and all Ambazonians at the time 
had their political representation. It is a very good thing. I saw the map that was displayed when um, Dr. Ayaba was speaking. Look at it very carefully. You will see that when it came to us, it used to be called the NCNC, National Council of the Cameroon, of National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons. When they say National Council of Nigeria, they were referring to Ambazonia. Ambazonians were part of us in Enugu before. Somehow, the powers that be determined that they should be cut away from us, that we are no longer, we are no longer one people. What gives you recognition is truthfulness. What gives you recognition is consistency. What gives you consist uh, what gives you recognition ultimately is the ability to let your enemies understand that you will sacrifice anything sacrificable to get that which is right for your people. And that is why we are getting a mention in New York Times, as you would say, you did not mention CNN because the same thing happened to CNN, even quoted me for the very first time. I'm not sure they've done that before. CNN quoted what I said regarding the um, attack of a non gun, I wouldn't call it an attack, the granting of grace uh, and freedom to people who are illegally incarcerated in Nigeria. And I do hope as time goes on that the same level of cons consistency and spirit of never say die will go into all ethnic nationalities within Nigeria and beyond that are yearning for freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh insight on on that uh, report yes i didn't come across the cnn report yet uh, i'm gonna look into that uh dr cho ayaba my question or you know i would ask you to make a comment is on the fact that you have actually elaborated a lot here the uh the uh, the, the dividends or what i should say uh what await the ambazonian people uh you know, through this alliance with the Biafrans. We've also have seen how the Nigeria government illegally repatriated uh, Cameroonians, uh, Ambazonians, back to Cameroon uh, against the international law. And uh, of course, what assurance or, you know, what assurance are you giving people of Ambazonia that the alliance between Ambazonia and Biafra is going to be more uh, fruitful than ever having anything to do with Nigeria, considering the fact that they have breached international laws, repatriated people from or people of Brazilian back to Cameroon, and today most of them are in jail unconstitutionally. Uh, thanks for that question. If you look at the map across the globe, whether within the European context, if you look at why there was a Second World War or First World War, you would discover that there are Germans within uh, Switzerland. There are Germans, the, the Germanic race in, in, in Austria. You have the French across in Quebec and in, in, in Belgium and different places. places. And, though, uh, and although this is, this is uh, what I call a linguistic uh, kind of unism, these countries have always sought alliances uh, with people with whom they have some cultural attachment for both cultural expansion, economic development, and purposes of self-preservation. And as, as I stated, the Biafrans are isolated. Ambazonians are isolated. These two nations form an economy of close to 72 million people, put together bigger than the economies of more than 100 United Nations countries. The Ambazonian economy has been sustained from Biafra, where people have had access to cheap goods. We are also aware that more than 20 years ago, Cameroon helicopter bo uh, gunships bombed boats that were coming in from Biafra, bringing in goods into Amazonia. We also know that while the Hausas and Fulanis are highly attached in the north to countries beyond the border of Nigeria, like Niger, 
and strengthening that alliance for both economic and political power. And the Yorubas are attached on the other side with Benin, ensuring their survival and self-preservation. What choice does the people of do the people of Biafra have? It's Ambazonia. And so this political alliance is crucial for the purposes of self-preservation of the two nations and also to let the others who have occupied our both countries know that we will not choose our friends based on the definitions and interests of those who've subjected us to impunity. As you've rightly said, a few years back, hundreds of Amazonians were illegally kidnapped. Those who are even sought asylum within Nigeria. They were subjected to psychological torture in prisons across Abuja, chained like sheep to the slaughter, conditioned to Cameroon, where they were incarcerated, detaining communicado, sentenced to life in jail. This is the collaboration between Yaoundé and Asorok. It serves the interests of Yaoundé and Asorok. It doesn't serve the interests of Ambazonia. And it has put to shame, it has brought shame to the Biafran people who have shown great hospitality to our people, including ensuring that there is protection for our refugees. Even though the refugees are within uh, the Biafra land, we have observed with great shock attempts by Yaoundé to work with certain political individuals within Nigeria to repatriate our refugees despite the raging war. This collaboration, as I have said, is defined in three phases. I will be leading on behalf of the Amazonian people, working with the people of Biafra and the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra to ensure that in phase one of this collaboration, we are able to work together to ensure the self-preservation of both peoples. However, the Biafrans choose to do it with their choice. For us, Ambazonia, the right to self-defense is a right that we have invoked because the only weapon of choice that Yaoundé and Cameroon has used in 60 years is that of rifles, machine gun. We have risen up, arm ourselves, and we will continue to arm every Amazonian to make sure that even after independence, there will be no threat to our independence as we saw 60 years ago. And I think it is important that when we establish a free and independent nation beyond our borders, there should be another nation that is free to engage in trade, commerce, dismantling the economic blockade that both countries of Nigeria and Cameroon have imposed. As we move forward, we will be looking at the details to expand the details of our collaboration. And as I know, and as I said in my opening statement to assure the Amazonian people, in times of peril, leadership must make decisions that safeguard the interests of the people. There will come a time when the Amazonian people will be able to certify the instruments of collaboration to be binding to both Amazonia and Biafra. And that can be invoked under international law as binding to both peoples. I trust my brother, Mazin Namdu Kano, for his steadfastness, for his ability to galvanize and mobilize the Biafran people. To you, the Biafran people, this is what I'd like you to know. You cannot allow people to invade your land. Use your resources to arm themselves and subject you to torture while you escape across borders to establish little niches in different countries. You must rise up in whatever way, form or shape to defend your right to exist, defend your right in the land of your birth, 
to exploit your resources for the benefit of your own people and to make sure you can be quick to the next generation a better place than you have inherited. A genocide took place in your land. Those people didn't die in vain. In the past few weeks, we have observed with shock and awe helicopter bomb, uh, gunships throwing bombs in your suburbs. Those people who have died have not died in vain. And I can assure you, we will establish within the Gulf of Guinea stable political systems that would ensure that our partners beyond our region can trade with us with respect for our independence and to make sure that we can reap the benefit of international trade. What we should never allow again, and I say we, Biafrans, Amazonians, and all peoples within the continent who are blessed with the bounties that God has given us, is to allow tyrants and murderers to hijack our states and use it as experiments for murder and genocide. That era has come to an end. Well detailed comment on that, uh, on that uh, question I asked. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, both of you have done so well. And uh, uh, our viewers, uh, also, thank you for, for watching. We are going to ask you, both of you, to give somehow uh, a closing uh, statement, you know, word of encouragement to both uh, countries, both nations, uh, especially uh, those of our men in the forefront of these struggles. We want you to give word of encouragement. In very brief. We can start from Mohammed Bike or Biafra. Yes, thank you, Simon. And once again, thank you, my dear brother, um, Dr. Cho Ayaba. What I have to say is very simple, is that we have embarked upon a mission and a journey from which there is no turning back until victory is assured. What we can also tell our people today is one thing that we are not going to stop what we are doing until freedom is secured for all our peoples. It doesn't matter what the enemies do. It doesn't matter what they intend to do. It doesn't matter the sort of collaborations they may enter into. It doesn't matter what form of brutality or any form of brutality they may wish to visit upon us. We are resolved and determined to make sure that we prosecute this very campaign to its glorious end because in the end we're going to emerge victorious there are men who are fighting people who are defending our land against the excesses of planet danger with those who have come from the sahel to cover our land we're not going to allow them to do that i must encourage them and also encourage ambazonian fighters as well in all that they are doing to ensure that the land of ambazonia is safe we must not make this very mistake that most people do all the time to think that help is going to come from somebody else nobody's going to help us we are here to help ourselves and god willing we are going to emerge victorious so i thank all people watching right across the face of this planet earth today and especially to this very union of biafra and Ambazonia, because i do know that in time to come it will yield positive fruits and results that will help propel both nations towards freedom and that's why we are here that is what we are dedicated to doing and that's what we are going to do every blessed day of our lives until both peoples are free thank you very much thank you thank you very much Diohamadike of Biafra uh Dr. Cho Ayaba can you give uh the men in front line your word of encouragement Thank you very much. First, I would like to thank my brother for the courage. Uh, both of us standing here today is out of courage. And I want to thank you very much for having that courage to make sure that we can step out of the cocoon and speak together. To our both peoples, the people of Biafra and Amazonia, I would like you to be assured that in our greatest moments of need, 
like those of others before us. They've established alliances to ensure their survival. Look back and you find roads and our villages littered with the charred bodies of brave men and women who rose before us to attempt to defend our lands. You look back and it's horror and pain faced by millions of people who have never known happiness, who have never known peace, facing ecological and economic disaster of untold proportions imposed by others who have sought to occupy our both countries without our consent. Look back and there is genocide and hopelessness. You look forward, there is hope. But you require determination and courage to marshal on and to make sure that we can both be free. Amazonians must know the tenure of Cameroon in Amazonia has come to an end. The last chapter of its presence has been written by the blood of our people and its tyranny and subjugation and impunity and abuse shall never again be tolerated. We will establish going forward friendship with people who have similar experiences and will mean good for us. But we will also ensure we proudly safeguard and preserve our independence. To you, the people of Biafra, you have to stand firm. The past has been difficult. The present is hopeless. But the future under your present leadership and construct is very hopeful. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been now a very successful press briefing. And on this day, the 9th of April 2021, history has been made. Thank you very much, Ohamadike of Biafra. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho Ayaba. And may God bless you. Now, our viewers, we are going to continue and we are going to have some panelists who are going to join me uh, in the studio and we are going to make some kind of uh, uh, analysis on the speeches of these both leaders. So our viewers, don't go away. Sit right there and watch as we bring in panelists. And remember that the collaboration and alliance between Biafra and Ambazonia has just started. Most of the thing is not going to be happening on social media. We are not going to be broadcasting as we move forward in this quest for freedom of both nations. But the actions, collaboration as a result of the collaboration or what you are going to be seeing from now on will tell you what is going behind the scene. The history has been made. And somebody like me and you watching today, we are all happy to be part of this great day that I've just started. Thank you and stay tuned as we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Ambazonia and Biafra, the national anthem of Ambazonia. Bye. 
Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Biafra and Ambazonia, the national anthem of the indigenous people of Biafra. ACN. Citizens of Amazonia, Biafra, and friends of the world, welcome to the joint press briefing between the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazi, Namdi, Kanu, and the leader of the Amazonian Liberation War, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Welcome to ACN, the Liberation TV of Ambazonia. Ambazonia Defense Forces, the vanguards of the Ambazonia War of Independence. Stay tuned on ACN TV. We will be right back.
We need peace, we choose freedom. We need peace, we choose freedom. There was a nation living in peace and unity yeah. There are people with love and harmony oh, yeah. They saw greatness rise up to its purity mm -hmm. We're not a people of different culture A dear heritage by us and oppressive oh, I see, I see a nation from trigger of Africa Rising with strength and might and power In due time nobody gonna praise us Rather you all gonna embrace us With your flag, with your flag, with your flag, with your flag Ooh, yeah. Let the tears of our mothers Who lost their children be heard Let the blood of our heroes Speak from now till forever Let the whole wide world know Yafra is our home Oh yeah Yafra is our home Oh, it's my home Yafra is our home I remember my knees way back, 1967 Death toll and the blood couldn't kind of live on Mama screaming, child screaming, pops on the ground Two and a half year, over three millions gone Why? Cause we asked for our freedom And we're going back to our sovereign kingdom This shut us down when we cried, the world said nothing Sitting back in the crib, watching our suffering Should I talk about the planes dropping shells like rain? Suka had the first taste of a hero's blood A bag and a zobuni grave was stronger than flood But a juke was too strong and fought them off on the chart Thought the bloodshed's gone Then it came again 2.16 and the massacre, he started again So bloody now, I couldn't cry tears Blood dripping down my eyes, water in my veins We died trying to fight the curse and we're trying to break him It's our freedom, but the world was against us With your flag over Africa Welcome people of Biafra Wave your flag over all the world See those people of Zion is here It is a nation that the Lord has chosen For the people of Zion It is a nation that the Lord has chosen For the people of Zion We need peace, we choose freedom We need peace, we choose freedom Let the tears of our mothers Who lost their children be heard Let the blood of our heroes Speak from now till forever Let the whole wide world know Yafra is our home Again on this one, your boy's Dave. But that again, we know we forget you way. Kick all like we know we forget you way. Brother Wabi, we know we forget you way. We know say you don't go, we know we forget you way. We know say you don't go, we know we forget you way. Pretty Allah, we know we forget you way. Bello, we know we forget you way. We know say you don't go, we know we forget you way. We know say you don't go, we know we forget you way. 
bello, we no be forget you way. We no say you don't go, we no be forget you way. We no say you don't go, we no be forget you way. We no be forget you, we no go forget you, we no be forget you. We are letting Biafras know the reason why we should remember those who gave their life for us, those who died, that we may live. Shout out them, 67 to 70, we remember them 2016, 38 May, memory still deeps in our mind till today Wonder why they refuse to publicize the genocide The world media turn blind eyes to our plight It's time to arise, land of the rising sun Let's rise one more time, let's rise
flag in the air. Never be afraid. Be afraid. March on. Cause we are more than conquerors. Conquerors. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is. I'm looking at myself. We must revenge. And we must stand. Stand to represent who we are.
sucking of gas line zone. Yeah, cultural dance in Abali Alano, Ibon Nabu. Thank you very much, Kuna Abali Alano. The cultural dance in Abali Alano. Tito, I need to learn a program this very well. I'm an abanot and abasat on a bander. So we are not throwing the party. Thank you, DJ Mopi. And I'm supporting. Thank you. You know, you know, I love too much. Even if you can go and catch a ball, yeah. Thank you very much.
Tonight, we are going to be having, uh, in the panel, we're going to be having the Vice President of Governing Council of Ambazonia, no one but, but no the uh, Dr. Julius Nyi, and also Dr. Gavila, who is, uh, everyone knows, you know, a firebrand uh, doctor, an economist, uh, you know, a strategist, uh, that uh, our brother Dr. Larry is here also. If it's not, then no problem. We have two great giants in the room. We have some of the greatest minds today in the room. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, VP. Good evening, Dr. Gabila, A.K. Dr. G. Uh, good evening, uh, Asu and uh, Comrade VP. Good evening to you. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Dr. Gabila. Hi, good evening, Comrade Asu. It's nice to be uh, on the air once more to dissect not only the message of the two giants in the Gulf of Guinea, but also to look at their body language, the economics, and the implications for the Gulf of Guinea and Africa. All right, let's get started. Uh, let me start with you, uh, the Vice President of Governing Council of Ambazonia. This is very historic. This is very unprecedented. The Ambazonia War of Independence has suffered a stagnation. Today, I consider it to be a day of reawakening of the passion, the commitment of the Ambazonian people. In summary, I mean, when you watch the two leaders, you watch uh, uh, Namdi Kanu, leader of the Biafran people, you watch his statement, you watch his passion, his energy, his enthusiasm, just the focus. And listening to Dr. Ayabacho, you know, narrating the importance of this alliance. Now, what came to mind, sir? Uh, thank you so much uh, for that question. Indeed, when I watched them, I wasn't only listening to the message, the communication in itself, the message is only 30% of the communication. 70% is the non-communicable message, body language, tone, the look, the economics. When you looked into the uh, Omar DK1 of Biafra, you saw that his head was around 45% perpendicular, 180 degrees, 45% tilted forward. And if you look at Dr. Cho Ayaba, it was around 25%. That in itself shows focus. When you look at the shoulders, the shoulders were horizontal at that straight same angle of 180 for both leaders when they sat and stood to make up their speech. When you heard the way they spoke, they spoke in a soft tone. Combine the tone, combine the body posture, combine the focus in no blinking. When you looked at the eyelids, the eyelids of Omadike, one of Biafra, was not shaking and they were more or less looking towards the east. When you looked at the eyelids of Dr. Cho Ayaba, they were more or less looking towards the west. That tells you something. These two leaders can be related to what we call the sophisticated modern leadership style. When you look at the message, it's indeed historic, not only for the Gulf of Guinea, but for two peoples that share the same heritage, the same genome, that have been divided by colonialism, but also for the dead of groups sponsored. Today is a historic day, not only for the making of this alliance, but for the dead of major groups sponsored by both Nigerian government and Cameroon government in order to fight us. And the Omadi one Omadi of Biafra elucidated to that. We thought that it was only in Ambazonia. So indeed, today is the birth of more space, is the birth of more collaboration, sharing of knowledge, sharing of uh, ecological space, sharing of know-how, sharing of tactical strategic advice. So it goes further than that in order to preserve the people of Biafra and Ambazonia. Our famous Dr. G. Uh, Comrade Asu, thank you so much for, for this opportunity. I thank uh, the Honorable uh, Comrade Vice President for uh, the, the honor of sharing this platform with him. And 
I, I, I approach this very much from the perspective of, uh, of an independent-minded analyst that uh, attempts to engage with very complex and delicate uh, uh, arrangements of this nature to try and help our people to the most important thing. And permit me to start by saying that I want to commend the leadership of uh, the and the leadership of, of IPO uh, for, for taking a very bold step uh, to forge this beginning step towards defining the blueprints of an alliance. And I think it's symbolic of a, a new dawn in African leadership. I particularly want to commend the leadership of, of the Ego C on this for the simple fact that we know the the, the amount of noise that has been within uh, the Amazonian movement as this specific movement is concerned. And I brought this speaking, Africa is sitting at the place there is the emergence of a new caliber of leaders, a new caliber of leaders that are going to be bold and resolute and focused and determined who do not shy away from challenges do not stay away from things because they are necessarily controversial but articulate with clarity their conviction uh, and take the bulls by the horns and go for 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 the forging of of alliances and partnership that seems six to uh, uh, what's the word bring together the, the collective efforts to get the the spillover multiplier effect and 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 i think it's leadership and when i go back to the actual press conference in itself good to see a new generation of africans putting their voice to play the concerns of the voiceless putting their to articulate the concerns of the common plight of a people if you look at the maps that were displayed during that interview and i was just looking at it and thinking to myself Take away the line that was put on that paper that defined the territories as belonging to two separate national polities. You essentially have a geographical continuum of people that have a shared cultural heritage, a shared history, and the leaders took us all the way back to the Bantu civilization and our common heritage to realize that not only do we share all these in common, but we are are all being victims of a decolonization process that has bequest upon us uh, political arrangements that, that do not fit the aspirations of our people. Decolonization has created for us a monster called the state that seeks to assert itself at the very expense of the people to be representing. And I think new era of African leadership which Dr. Cho, uh, uh, Comrade Nam, uh, um, Namdi, represent is a, an era of African leadership that questions the very essence of our being and the political of ownership and management of resources that define our fulfillment as a people. It is it is fundamental to our very humanity to aspire for freedoms. It is fundamental to our very, very humanity to be part of punishments and systems that capture our essence as the people. Now, every or any political arrangement that serve up and fail to capture the aspirations of most minute members of any society and any state that sets itself up to the process of decolonization to so and oppress any segment of the loses its legitimacy. Because all the essence of governance and government is about. So if we sit in any political that does not meet our aspirations, we have the leadership responsibility to challenge that arrangement and to the very core. All right. And that is leadership. And I like, I like what Dr. Cho and uh, Comrade Namji closed by saying, and I want both Biafrans and Ambazonians and Africans to remember that. We should stop wishing for the, this uh, Father Christmas that is going to come uh, and fall through the chimney to bring us solutions. Especially not coming from the international community. Help is not on its way. We are on our own. We either survive together or perish. And I think that that's one of the key messages that I really eat from the leaders here. There's more I want to say. All right, there is, there, there is, there is more. We will, we will get to that. I know how passionate you can be, uh, uh, Doctor Julius Nye. Let us ask you this: 
How symbolic was this in terms of pivoting? Because the Ambazonian War of Liberation has gone through this period of stagnation. There, there seems to be no movement, no seriousness within the international community. There seems to be no dynamism within Ambazonia. How has this radically changed the direction of Ambazonia liberation? Thank you so much uh, for that uh, interjection. The, it, it, to say that the tectonic plates of geopolitics within the Gulf of Guinea, including Nigeria, Cameroon, and uh, Equatorial Guinea itself, Ambazonia and Biafra, has shifted. It's, um, it, it's, it's an undertone. This has shaken. Mind you, diplomacy and international system works at a snail pace. But the appearance of these two leaders and what they stand for, which is identical, why Mazinam Dikanu talked about consistency, ideologically driven sacrifice and, 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 and continuity. Cho, Dr. Cho talked about steadfastness, consistency and ideology. These are the underpinnings of the new leadership that Dr. Gabila just said. And these are the signals that tell the international community that the people that you separated are coming together for their own good, even though post-independence there will be separate state. This is a statement to say that in the new world order, there are no permanent friends or permanent enemies. There are interests. And as calculus change, so to do interest change. Three, four years ago, it was unthinkable to talk about any alliance with the IPOB. But nowadays, it is even sought after. It is the talk of the day because the two people that share the same developmental history, the same uh, uh, culture, uh, the, the same political uh, history, the same violence against its own people, the same killing, the same uh, international conspiracy uh, to wipe them off the map of the earth has emerged. And I bet you from our insiders in Yaoundé and Aso Rock, they were watching us, they are trembling, because they know that both Ambazonia and the Biafra people have finally emerged, have finally done what they thought they have been playing around to subdue or to dissuade people from doing it. And today is a great day, as both leaders said. Dr. G, let me ask you this. Did the, the president of governing council of Ambazonia, the leader of our war of independence, did he live up to the expectations of the Ambazonian people? The, the, the art of forging leadership in the kind of delicate uh, war of independence that were persecuted is a very delicate. And the short answer is yes. Uh, leadership is not a beauty contest. It's not the art of pleasing the mean average thinks he has an opinion. Opinions obviously must thrive in democracy for the vibrancy of our engagement. But to the extent that a people do not have the ability to identify or produce a crop of leaders that take strategic actions of the kind that we just saw tonight, then such a people are doomed for perpetuity. I commend uh, Dr. Ayaba for the leadership that he and his team has have, have taken. I take particular note that in, in the opening statements of uh, Komi, um, he took special attention to recognize the representativeness of the Amazonian leadership that is in jail. It tells me that the AGOFC team did their homework to provide briefing to their counterpart about the context of the Amazonian uh, war of liberation. That's leadership. You know, a lot of people can see ownership of Android phones and run commentaries on Facebook and on Twitter, WhatsApp. That's okay. You know, they are justifying the use of their data and why they pay internet bill at the end of the month. But we need people who 
think strategy, understand the dynamics of our current war of liberation, and take steps that seek to provide guidance and direction. Deal with the very difficult questions and issues that we are handling. And I, I recognize the fact that both Dr. Nam uh, Comrade Namji and Dr. Ayaba understand that this is a first step towards the establishment of blue, uh, blueprint that provides a framework that would explore the possibilities of neutralizing our efforts in order to, to be able to find, um, use the words that they put it, to use every means humanly possible to resolve this that we are facing as as a people. Build on what Dr. Julius just said earlier on to strike a conversation uh, to our partners in the international community. I like the fact that they said that this is a political alliance that has no objective to offend or antagonize any party, but it is driven by the need for self-preservation. It is part of the of our humanity to aspire for self-preservation. It's a common denominator in humanity all across the board. Many French, Israelites, that if our human existence is threatened, be it by whatever construct which we want to call a state, we have an obligation, take of self-preservation, to stand up and defend that. Nobody should feel antagonized. Nobody should feel under attack. We are reasserting our rights to be human. If we lose that, we use our humanity, and we may just, we just throw up to the throw into into the zoos and into the jungle and join the the animal kingdom having lost every essence of who we are as humans. So it's fundamental. And I believe that this message, well-crafted and to the DA of Nigeria and the security services that are listening to us, to the security cluster of, of, of La Republic Cameroon who are watching and listening to us, understand that there is no harm meant. Nobody is seeking to antagonize any third party. But God in heaven is true and has us our humanity. We have the rights to defend it against imposition from states that use the legitimacy of the state to suppress the aspirations of the people. And every time a state organizes itself in a political arrangement that does not capture the sense of the humanity, the most minute component of that entity, that state's legitimacy should duly be challenged. Because at the end of the day, and I say it again, Comrade Asu, at the end of the day, the notion of the state and government has to be primarily about the people. And I think that our leadership is putting the issues on the table. We are asking the right questions. We are bringing it into, onto the right issues. We are saying it's about time as Africans, where we rise above the vestiges of decolonization and let it not be instrumentalized to destroy us. Comrade Asu, uh, Comrade DP, just give me one minute. Let me explore this idea. Go ahead, please. Back, I said, for this interview, I went back to the question of Biafra. And it occurred to me that post colonization, I'm thinking after 100 years of the slave trade and almost another 100 years of fighting, that I should see and see 2 million Biafrans. I'm not talking about sheep and about human beings that are murdered in cold blood as a result of the starvation policies of General Yakubu Gowon. And we sleep at night, and we somehow justify that in our brains, in our understanding, that it is okay for us to murder our own in the name of the present inclusive concept that we date. What is the state? Where did it come from? Where was it in, 19, in, in 1900? How is it that now? The question which we must ask ourselves as Africans is, could this have happened in an American civilization? Could this have happened in a French civilization? In 1960, could French people supervise the killing of 2 million French people? Invasion of what they call the state. And this is what is in Ambazonia. For the last, uh, 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 since 2016, we African city in and means and the resources of the state and kill other Africans. Somehow rationalize that to themselves, that it is for the preservation of the integrity of the state. What is the state? The state becomes a monster that consumes the people. 
The people have an obligation to rise up and challenge that notion that is called the state. And that's what... All right, Dr. G. All right, Dr. G. Let me ask uh, the Vice President this question. Uh, 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 Dr. Gilosny, let's ask you this. How has this alliance, how has this joint press conference changed the dynamics in the international community? This press conference and the symbolism of it can also be equated to our admission at OMPO. Remember in 2018, when we visited the Basque parliament, when we uh, went into uh, some collaboration with the Basque, we were told that the Basque are no country yet, it doesn't work. And we explained to the Ambazonian people that we had done our research, we had done our homework, we had looked at our situation, we had looked at the international system and we understand how it works, that you don't get to the top by playing top game. You don't play the Champions League when you wake up in the morning. You start with your quarter game to a third division, to a first division and play the Champions League. So today's sharing of a platform and collaborative apparatus between Ambazonia and Biafra that seeks to preserve their people to be liberated is a milestone that is being read not only at the level of governments but multilateral international organizations. It signals that even underprivileged people of Ambazonia and Biafra can find common ground and friends. It also opened doors, just like the Basque country did for us, that we could only talk to the Basque, and today we are talking at the middle of the United Nations, that is only a matter of time, as I said in my address last week, that this year is year of power diplomacy, that from this collaboration, other countries will follow suit and align with Ambazonia and Biafra because their interests would be preserved, their interests would be pursued internationally. It also sends a signal to Cameroon that if you are playing ball and to Nigeria that if you are playing ball, this is huge and you better resolve this problem once and for all. Remember, the Secretary General of the UN in 1961, uh, Dark Hemavoid, uh, the, the Dutch uh, diplomat, uh, said that merging Ambazonia with Cameroon was like submerging a balloon under the sea. It's going to come up. And it came up full scale in 2016. This in itself, through our diplomatic contacts in the last three days alone, there's been just so much activity. And we knew all of them were watching because they had said they were going to watch to put that in their own calculations and how this crisis is going to be resolved. But let Cameroon, let Nigeria make no mistake. Uh, from the stance of these two leaders, Comrade Namdi Kano and Dr. Cho Ayaba, you can see that they are ideologically driven, something that most African states don't have. Even their countries are run on a day-to-day -day policy. They are not based on any ideology or any strong foundation to protect the lives of Africans and their countrymen and women. That these two guys look out for them. It's a new beginning for Ambazonian people and Biafra people. It's a new beginning for the Gulf of Guinea. It's a new beginning for Africa. Dr. G, let me ask you this. How has this alliance reinvigorate the, the, the commitment of the Biafran people based on what well, uh, Namdi, the, the, the leader of the Biafran indigenous people, Namdi Kanu, has expressed today? I, I think that like the, we, we are witnessing the emergence of a new body politics within the Gulf of Guinea. 
I thought Biafra are going to find validation. They're going to find uh, 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 in the fact that cross the artificially created borders so have a group of Amazonians that have vision of Japan. Let us not forget that in exactly the same way that the Latifu took time to Amazon, to the extent that some people don't want to identify themselves as Amazonians, is exactly the same way that uh, Nigeria took time to demonize the concept of Biafra. That's what we used to call us Biafrans, which is which, which is or which is arm, an arm in itself uh, uh, in, in international warfare and diplomacy, uh, uh, part of the propaganda arm. So I think that what we are doing this alliance is mainstreaming the, the denomination that we have used to call uh, uh, that our enemies have sought to bastardize and, and paint a negative of an elsewise aspiration of a people. So, so we are taking, we are bringing, we are bringing Biafra out of the closet. We are owning their plight, and we are giving them validation, and we are telling them that as much they as we do not share in this whole, whole oppress that we are witnessing from the colonial regimes that we have set in the form of the states of La Republic of Cameroon and uh, the Nigerian government, we are finding common cause in our common experience to define one destiny because of the common geographical space that we share. As we have both been victims of a common full planning conspiracy. Now, uh, the, let me, let me, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the vice president, let me, let me ask you this. Now, with the emergence of a, br of, of a vibrant, charismatic, ideological led leadership from Nam Dikano of the Biafra and leader of Ambazonia War of Independence, Dr. Ebacho, is this a change in the Gulf of Guinea? Will these two emerging nations become the new light? to represent a generation that has been oppressed for centuries. I, I couldn't deny uh, your statements. This is what they said, each of them, that we will not bequeath to the next generation the same status quo that we inherited. We will give our next generation something better than we got. Hmm. Remember, there is a saying that the fish starts getting rotten at the head. So if you have a good leader, you get good outcomes. If you have a bad leader, you get bad outcomes. With these two leaders, it builds that conveyor belt. It builds that following of new leadership within the Gulf of Guinea. It shows the people the kind of leadership that they've been yearning for. It reinvigorates, it re-energizes those that are defending their sovereignty. It gives hope to those that have been under servitude for the last 60 years for both uh, countries. Lady. It allows them to be able to stand firm with an ideology, defend it, defend their land of birth, and die for it until independence come. When I'm going to talk about it, connected. I, I, I look at the current leadership in both countries and you find that there are total opposites. Where you find the leader of the Biafran people very charismatic as the leader of the Ambazonian War of Independence, you find a lame dog president in Aso Rock and another lame dog dying president in a today yaounde and this goes to show you that with charismatic leadership with this new crop of ambazonian and biafrans you will get what you see on the tin i thank these two gentlemen so much many people were questioning why do you do that why should we join with the biafra we are not fighting the same war the biafrans weren't recognized in 1961 but remember that the public announcement of this is 
as a result of months of back and forth meetings that these two organizations have had. And they have studied the international system. They have studied how they are hemmed in within that Gulf of Guinea by two superpowers. And they've seen that the best way to preserve yourself is to stand for your rights. Self-defense is a universal right. And the Ambazonian people and the Biafran people will defend themselves. And as they said and reiterated by Dr. G, nobody's coming to our help. The Ambazonian people by themselves, the Biafran people do it by themselves. So this is a good day for leadership, not only for the two gentlemen, but for the new crop of leadership. Because people tend to emulate what they see. Not everybody, but many people tend to emulate what they see. If you see corruption in Cameroon and Nigeria, you tend to become corrupt. If you see leadership and leadership, you tend to become transparent. And these two gentlemen shine excellently in this light. I hear the the public. The public wants to ha have some calls for the two of you. Someone is calling from Toronto. Go ahead, please. Hello, my name is Dr. Chidi Mayo. I'm the and I um I was pleased to have monitored the the conversation between those two great men on your ACN uh, channel. In fact, I was excited because today is my first time of uh, seeing your channel. But I'm so so uh, excited and committed to even be transmitting your programs from now. All right. Thank you very much. Do you have a question for Dr. Gilosny, the Vice President of Governing Council of Ambazonia, and uh, the economist and lecturer and activist Dr. Gabila concerning the joint press conference? No, I, no, I don't really have a question for them because I, mine, if anything, is just to encourage people who have, um, have not been monitoring the, 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 the program. I monitored it a little bit and I had to attend to another program. But what I want to say to some of the people that I've been hearing some of the questions that people are asking, but I, I don't want to be upset with anybody because this is, um, this is a journey, continuous journey. And we've just come to a new stage in this journey. We've come to a new stage. I just want to encourage people to listen more closely. I am very, very impressed that we have people like them. I'm excited. I'm going to pay more close attention to them, but I want people to pay closer attention to the Ambazonian struggle and what you guys are putting out there. The more they get closer, the more they understand, they understand what is going on, the more they will be able to see that we all are actually fighting for the same goal, and that is just liberation of our people. So all, right. all I thank have you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Your two minutes. Thank you, thank you very much. Your two minutes are up. Let's give the space for others. Thank you very much from Toronto. That's uh, an Ambazonia, or uh, that, that's uh, our bro a Nigerian who's uh, who called from Toronto, Canada. Let's take this call from the United Kingdom. Hello. Hello. Good evening to you in the United Kingdom. How are you doing? Hello. 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 Hello, sir. Can you reduce the volume behind uh, the volume on your TV, please? Okay. All right. Go Hello, ahead. How are you? We are, we are good. Everyone can yes, listen I'm to you. Calling from, yes, I'm, I'm watching you, people. I'm calling from UK, okay? All right, sir. Do you have a question um, or a comment? Yes. I just want to thank God for uh, the leader of Abazona and Jeffrey. Uh, one thing I want to say they should not relent their efforts. They should keep on. Because uh, the same thing happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. One day, God remembered them. Biafra must be free. Abazona must be free. I just want to ask the Vice President, how are you coping with your people? Go ahead, uh, the how Vice you President. Coping, uh, uh, the relationship with you and them, how is it got getting on? Oh, thanks so much first for your kind words. We are getting on so well.
you tell your people that and they know that they are fighting to defend their damn God-given land, they know that they are fighting to preserve their life, if not they remain in servitude, they will rise up and they are rising up in Amazonia in their numbers. All right. Thank you, Kola, and uh, thank you, the Vice President, for that uh, for answering that question. We have a lot of calls coming in. Let's take this call from somewhere. I don't know where. What country is that? Hello. Good evening to you. Let's take this call from Germany. Hello, comrade in Germany. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, my brother, for accepting this call and. Um, I am calling from Germany. We, yes, we, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Either you have a question or you have a comment. Okay, I just have a comment and um, just uh, just a comment. I uh, thank you very much for this very wonderful program that uh, you guys organize. Uh, it is actually a new development, and um, we all uh, that is exactly what we want. You know the reason why we are suffering both Biafrans and um, Ambazonians is because we have given those people the chance which we couldn't have given them for the first time. But I can say that is not our fault because those people who claim to be our leader are not actually our leader. They are slaves to white people, to these people we are living in their country. How can, how can, how can a whole president just like the one you have in Cameroon there, nobody know whether he's alive or he's dead. Why must, why must Africans be allowed themselves to be killed by their own soldiers, which are their African brothers and sisters? Why the European people who created those countries, who are presiding over us, will never say anything because of the resources they are getting? It is high time the Abanzonians understand that and understand that they need Biafra to be free. It is high time the Afghans understand the need and the persona. Oh, my God. 
Thank you.